Welcome to our World of Fiery videos, covering topics of everyday importance to print providers. Today we will cover challenges with printing spot colors. So the four challenges I want to talk to you about today are accuracy of your spot color printing, consistency of the spot colors that you print, challenges with design files, and this is the number one place those of you that report you've had trouble if it was an in-gamut color, it didn't print as expected, very good chance there was a problem with the way it was designed or with the way you compared the design with what's, how your DFE is set up. And then finally, we'll talk for a moment about the topic of subjectivity, how the human eye perceives color and how this can sometimes get in our way when we're trying to satisfy one of our print buyers with spot color matching. So when we talk about accuracy, the key thing here is to use a CMYK output profile designed for your digital system. And as we said in the session a couple weeks ago, and I'll recap for those of you that weren't here, the manufacturer supplied profile is a very good quality profile. In some cases, it's actually approved by the manufacturer. Certainly, all the profiles we ship with Fireys have to be approved by the press manufacturer. But those profiles are made for a different engine than the one that you have in your shop in a different environment, maybe on a different paper. So if you really want to precisely define the gamut of your print system so that color management can work 100%, we really need to make a custom output profile. The second thing we need is we need the spot color table, the LUT or lookup table is what this stands for, that we create using the output profile. And this is the case that I showed on the last slide where we look up all the different CMYK tints for each spot color in the library for each output profile. Because remember, that device-dependent CMYK recipe will change when I go from one stock to another, one set of print settings to another, and certainly when I go from one press to another. In the realm of consistency, we have to make sure that our printer is in a known, known and repeatable state. And as we talked about before, this means that not only do we need to have a proper output profile created, we also need to calibrate the DFE. Calibration is the critical step that you take on a regular basis to keep the DFE printing in a predictable and consistent way. Without this, all the work you did to make your output profile won't give you the same level of precision from day to day or week to week or month to month. And so we will cover one more time here, the very, very common question that I hear, which I think we even got some people asking in the last webinar after it, how often should I calibrate? We give some guidelines here. Certainly we want the engine, print engine warmed up before we calibrate. Certainly a good idea to calibrate before a large, important job. Very important to remember that calibrating when you change media is recommended, since if you have a toner-based laser device, it's going to have some drift to it. If I calibrate for a paper at 9 o'clock in the morning and I don't print on it till the afternoon, that calibration may no longer be very valid after I've run my press a whole bunch. And finally, we have to pay attention to environmental fluctuations. So unless you're in the rare shop where you have a humidity and temperature controlled press room, you're going to need to calibrate on a regular basis as temperature and humidity change because they'll change the way the printing process works or the appearance that we get from the printing process. So to remind you, the lower left corner is where we don't want to be. We don't have an accurate profile, and we're not calibrated, so you can see our colors are all over the place. Calibration, to give me consistency, means my colors get into a repeatable and expected location. I haven't got them where I want them yet, in the center of the target, but that's where the output profile comes in. Once I've calibrated the device, made the proper output profile, now my colors will be precise, and they'll be repeatable from day to day so that I can reprint jobs and print things from a long time ago and still have the customer satisfied. And again, in terms of brand colors, still get the matching color for that brand that is sometimes the most important thing to your customer. In some cases, for a brand owner, more important than the way the process color looks and the RGB and CMYK sources and other objects in the file often take a back seat to the matching of the brand color that they take the reputation on. So to talk a little bit about design file challenges, there's three problems that we 
face in the world of digital production of spot colors. The first one is a simple one, but I would be surprised if some of you have not missed this in the past. If the spot color in the design file is not named precisely the way the spot color is named in the DFE spot color table, you're not going to get a match. So if I create a file in Illustrator and I make a color Pantone 356C by hand, that is, I'm not pulling it from the Pantone library, I just type it in, I've misspelled this, so to speak, because I didn't put in the space between a number and the C that my spot color library expects. This means that this color, while it looks like a real Pantone color in the job, is not going to get looked up and color managed precisely. Instead, as I said earlier, we're going to get that alternate color definition, that color definition that the Illustrator or InDesign puts in there to simulate the color, but it's not going to give us a precise match on our particular press paper uh, with our print settings. The second challenge is the spot color not being found. So this is the problem where I've named the color exactly right. Here's a Pantone from the new Pantone Plus co uh, coded V2 library very recently released by Pantone, and we just released this for the fire a year in the last month or so. This is a color that needs a new library loaded on your DFE to get looked up. So in this case, Pantone 19-2047, this plum color, went into the design file properly, into the DFE properly. But when the DFE went and looked for it in the spot color library, if we didn't have the new Pantone Plus V2 library loaded, it's not found. And that means, again, we're going to get the alternate definition from Illustrator, which, as you can see here, might give us an approximation, but it's not going to give us the level of precision that a brand owner will demand. The third challenge in the realm of design files is that the plate is not present in the file. And you can sort this out with Pit Stop or with Illustrator for any file you might be supplied or might be creating. If I create a color like that Pantone color I showed on the last slide, or the FedEx colors that I'm showing here, and I don't make them separate spot color plates in the design application, then they won't be present in the PDF or the PostScript stream for the DFE to look it up. This is a very, very common problem. Designer makes a color, probably a great graphic designer, but doesn't know that much about the printing process. They don't specify when they create the color in the design application that this is supposed to be a spot color. Or another example is the job might have been designed in the past and converted to process for some affordable printing on a conventional device without having to use the Pantone inks. When we come to the digital world, we want to have the named spot colors as separate plates in this job because, again, unless they are, they're not going to be found on the DFE spot color library which means they're not going to reproduce accurately. The last area of challenge is the area of subjectivity. I think we talked about this in our earlier session, but I'm going to remind you, color management only works in D50 lighting. Part of the whole ISO series of specifications for color matching and color management and precise and high quality print reproduction is that a D50 light booth must be the place the prints are evaluated. So as you can see here, our designer is thrilled by the match that they see from their Pantone fan book to the spot color we've reproduced on the digital device. But if she takes that out of the booth, looks at it at her customer site, or in the waiting room, or in the car, or somewhere in her home, she's not going to see the same match. So it's very important to remember when you're selling spot colors and talking to brand owners or brand people about matching their spot colors, and you do all the things that we're teaching you today in order to get the match, you have a calibrated modern D50 light booth so that you can see this matching occur. You're going to always be disappointed. This is an example of a REM strip, um, which I think is probably still available from Printing Industries of America, maybe some other international organizations. This strip shows me when I'm in proper D50 lighting because the stripes disappear as we see in the center here. Thank you for watching. For additional resources and e-learning classes on this topic, visit our website. To see all recorded sessions and register for upcoming World of Fiery webinars, please visit efi.com forward slash WOF webinars.